still at the Belgian MOD here in Brussels with uh, Commander Bilto, the MCM program manager. And we, now we are going to look at the technical aspect of the future uh, mine warfare system, both the model ship and the toolbox. Concerning the uh, technical aspects of uh, this capacity, I would like to make the difference between the model ship and, and, and the toolbox. And let's start with uh, the model ship. The model ship is uh, 82 meters long has a displacement of 2,500 tons, which is uh, five times more than the current legacy uh, uh, mine hunters, um, with a basic crew of uh, 30 persons, which can be extended to 63 uh, persons in function of the modules that will be embarked to, to do the mission. It has a hangar um, that can host two UAVs. It has also on the, let's say, the, 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 the LARS, the launch and recovery part, it has two launch and recovery systems, for mainly for redundancy uh, purposes. Um, and you have to know that, in fact, the, the, the design of the ship is done oriented specifically around the launch and recovery system. If you cannot launch your USVs, then you can't perform your mission. So that, that's uh, an important uh, thing. Then, um, when we are talking about sensors, weapons and communications, yeah, of course, because you need uh, lots of communication with your um, unmanned systems, we um, have uh, specific um, requirements for cyber security. Because you're working with unmanned systems, you need uh, robust uh, cyber security systems uh, or safety systems as well. And um, concerning the, the weapons, we have a a bore for 40 mm and also some small remotely operated uh, weapons. Uh, also for the sensors and, and weapons uh, part, it's important to, to know that you cannot be sure that you are not entering into the mine threat area. There's al always uh, a small risk. That's why the ship is um, made uh, with a uh, mine, and, uh, mine and obstacle avoidance sonar. Uh, in case of, and it can resist to uh, a shock uh, for a mine that explodes uh, nearby. So it doesn't mean that you'll be able to continue his mission, maybe you will, but uh, it's uh, primarily to be able to leave the mine threat area to keep the crew safe. So that's for what the Sewako part. Then when we are talking about the toolbox, we have uh, tools uh, uh, in the air, on the surface and underwater. I'll start with the ones uh, in the air. We have the uh, UAV Skeldar, which was uh, chosen a couple of weeks ago. And this one uh, is needed to do uh, yeah, uh, situational awareness. It will be used as a um, uh, communications relay, because we are in a standoff concept um, of um, 12 nautical miles of the mine threat area, we need some communication relay, so this one will be uh, used for that. And also it will be able to have a payload on board with the LiDAR that can detect mines um, uh, on the water or, or a bit under the water. Then, the surface uh, tools, we have two USVs, uh, uh, manned um, uh, surface uh, vehicles, that will carry the payloads. Uh, important to know is also that some of the tools can be launched uh, from the platform itself. Uh, but when we use the USVs, um, we will do, of course, mine operations uh, happens in different uh, steps. And we start with the um, uh, detection of, of the mines. And for that, we will use the unmanned systems uh, from, from ECHA and uh, eventually also the uh, TOAD uh, sonar, which is derived from the um, medium unmanned systems. And afterwards, when we have detected uh, the, the mines, then we will use a MITS, a mine identification and disposal system, which is consists of a C-scan to do a proper identification of the mine, and then the K-STAR, which is a one-shot um, uh, explosive device that will destroy uh, the mine. So here you see the, the ship with its launch and recovery system. And inside the hangar we have everything that is needed, uh, the automated uh, handling uh, system that will be needed to uh, put all the different tools on board of the uh, USVs.
And this part will also be simulated in the simulator in Eggermin. Uh, this not only for the crew, but also for the crew that will handle the systems. We already performed several tests uh, in the uh, Marin in uh, the Netherlands, just to, to check that this cradle and the, the waveform here is as stable as possible, so that we could uh, do um, uh, a launch and recovery at sea state up to five. <laughs>